An object moves along a coordinate axis with a position function given by s of t equals t cubed minus 9t squared plus 15t minus 7, where s is measured in meters, t is measured in seconds, and t is greater than or equal to 0. Part A, find the velocity function, and Part B, find the acceleration function. Part C, determine the position, velocity, speed, and acceleration at time t equals 2 seconds. Part D, determine the time intervals when the velocity of the object is increasing and when it is decreasing. Determine the time intervals when the object is speeding up and when it is slowing down. And finally, find the total distance traveled by the object from time t equals 0 seconds to time t equals 10 seconds. Let's start by finding the velocity function. We have a position function, and to get a velocity function from the position function, we just need to take the derivative. So this is pretty easy. So the velocity function, which I will denote as v of t, is going to be the derivative of this polynomial right here. So that's just going to be 3t squared minus 18t plus 15. Next we have the acceleration function. So I've uh, put the position function and the velocity function on the side over here. And the acceleration function, which I will denote as a of t, that's just the derivative of the velocity function. So that's easy. 3t squared derivative of that is going to be 6t. And then we're going to have a minus 18. And that's the acceleration function. Now we want to determine the position, velocity, speed, and acceleration at time t equals 2 seconds. So first, the position. So for the position at 2 seconds, I can write that as s of 2. And now I'm just going to plug in a 2 for a t. So I have 2 cubed minus 9 times 2 squared plus 15 times 2 minus 7. And so that's going to give me 8 minus 2 squared is 4. 9 times 4 is 36 plus 15 times 2. That's going to be 30 minus 7. And let's see, I have 8 minus 7, that's 1. And I have negative 36 plus 30, that's negative 6. So that's going to give me a total of negative 5. And if you want, you can put some units on this. This is a position function here, and it says that s is measured in meters. So I can put it as 5 meters. How about the velocity function at 2? So that would be v of 2. And so that's going to be 3 times 2 squared minus... 18 times 2 plus 15. So that's going to be, let's see, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3, that's 12. Minus 18 times 2, that's 36. Plus 15. And that's going to equal... So let's see, uh, 12 minus 36 plus 15, that's going to be negative 9. And this has units of meters per second. Now we want to know the speed at 2. So to get the speed, we're going to take the absolute value of the velocity at 2. So that's pretty easy. That's the absolute value of negative 9, which is positive 9. And this also has units of meters per second. Finally, we want the acceleration at 2. So that's going to be a of 2. And that's going to be 6 times 2 minus 18. And 6 times 2 is 12 minus 18. And 12 minus 18, that's going to be negative 6. And the units on this are meters per second squared. Now we want to determine the time intervals when the velocity of the object is increasing and when it's decreasing. So to find the time intervals where it's increasing and decreasing, that's going to involve 
the derivative. The first derivative tells us when a function is increasing or decreasing. And we already know the derivative of the velocity function. That's the acceleration function. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the acceleration function equal to zero and solve for the time. That's going to give us our critical points. So in this case, that says that 6t equals 18. And that means that the time that we're going to look at here is going to be 3 seconds. Now we're going to make a little number line. And our critical point that we have is 3. And we're going to look to the left of 3. And we're going to look to the right of 3. And we're going to decide what the value of the acceleration function is in each of those two regimes. Because remember, the acceleration function is telling us the slope at different points on the velocity function. And so when we have something that's positive, that means that the velocity function is increasing. When we have something that's negative, that means it's decreasing. So in this case, I can pick 0. That's an easy one. The acceleration at 0 is going to be 6 times 0 minus 18. That's going to be negative. So I can put a little minus sign here. And let's pick 4. So the acceleration at 4, notice I'm plugging into the acceleration, not the velocity function. The acceleration at 4, well, that's going to be 6 times 4, 24 minus 18. doesn't matter what it is, it's positive. So that means that the velocity function is increasing on the interval, well, everything greater than 3. So times greater than 3. And it's decreasing. And that's going to be, well, we're starting, remember, at 0. Time is greater than or equal to 0. So that's going to be between 0 and 3. And you can see this graphically. If we look at a graph of the velocity function, we know the velocity function is a parabola. It says 3t squared minus 18t plus 15. That's going to look like a parabola. And we see that's decreasing from 0 down to 3 seconds. And then it's increasing after that. And if you look at the acceleration function, it's 0 at 3. That's our critical point. Remember, this is the slope of this function. So it looks like the slope is negative, 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 and then 0. And then positive, 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 positive. And that's what we see here. Negative, 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 0, positive, 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 positive. Now we want to determine the time intervals when the object is speeding up and when it is slowing down. Now speed is a little different from velocity. We're going to look at the absolute value of the velocity. And there's two ways to do this. You could go ahead and look at the graph of the velocity function and then imagine what the absolute value of that would look like. But suppose we didn't want to do this graphically. Is there another way that we could do this? And it turns out that there is. We can, once again, do a number line, and we're going to look at the signs of the velocity and the acceleration. And if the signs are the same, then that means that the object is speeding up. And if the signs are different, that means that the object is slowing down. Now, where are we going to get our critical points? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look for not only the places where the acceleration is zero, but also where the velocity is zero. So we already looked at the acceleration. What about the velocity? So we'll set that equal to 0, and we're going to have 0 equals 3t squared minus 18t plus 15. And this is going to factor as we're going to have a 3 that we can pull out. And let's see, I think it's going to be t minus 1 and t minus 5. OK. So it looks like 1 and 5 are the points that we're interested in, along with the 3 that we had from the acceleration. So we're going to make our number line again, except now we're going to have 1, 3, and 5. And we're going to look at the signs of v, and we're going to look at the signs of a. So let's start over here. Let's pick 0. Well, v of 0 is going to be positive. It's just going to be 15. a of 0 is negative. So we see different signs here. How about at 2? 
Well, if we plug in 2 into the velocity function, we did this earlier, if you remember. The velocity at 2 ended up being negative. It was negative 9. So that's negative. And what about the acceleration at 2? 6 times 2 is 12. 12 minus 18, we did that earlier. That was negative 6. That's going to be negative. How about at 4? The velocity at 4... Well, let's see. If remember, this was a parabola that had its, uh, let's see, lowest point at 3. Well, I, we'll just plug in. You know, 3 times 4 squared minus 18 times 4 plus 15. And let's see, 4 squared and times 3. It's going to be 16 times 3 minus 18 times 4. And I think this is going to be negative. You can do it on a calculator if you really want to make sure. And how about here, 6 times 4, 24 minus 18, that's positive. And then how about at 6 seconds? So at 6 seconds, again, you can check it with a calculator, or you can try plugging it in. I imagine, uh, look over, you could look at the graph, let's plug in, and I think you'll see that this will be positive at 6, and this will also be positive at 6. So now we can look at the signs. Anytime the signs are the same, like here and here, we see that the object is going to be speeding up. So speeding up, oops, speeding up is going to be, well, we're in here, so that's going to be between 1 and 3. And also, everything greater than 5. And slowing down, That's going to be the other places that we have here. So mm, 0 to 1. And 3 to 5. Let's look at a graph. This is the velocity function again. It's the parabola. And remember, speed is referring to the absolute value of velocity. So let's look at what's happening. At 0, we start out at 15. And we're looking at the absolute value. Well, these are all positive, 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 positive. And it's getting smaller, right? It's going 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, going all the way down to zero. That's slowing down. And then once we cross here, what's happening? Well, then it's getting more negative, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6. But if we're doing absolute value, those numbers are getting bigger, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so on, speeding up until we get to here. Then the numbers start to head back towards zero again. We're getting negative 10, negative 9, negative 8, negative 7, but we're taking absolute value, so it's going to be 10, 9, 8, 7, getting back to zero, slowing down. And finally, we're starting at zero again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, increasing, 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 speeding up. Finally, we want to find the total distance traveled by the object from time t equals 0 seconds to time t equals 10 seconds. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make a little chart of times and distances, but we need to know which times and distances we're interested in. So remember, we might have a graph that has some kind of backtracking in it, and that all counts for the distance. So we need to know where is the object changing direction, or where might it be changing direction. And it might be changing direction at the places where the velocity function is zero. Those are the critical points. Those are maxima and minima, potentially. And those are places where the object might be changing direction. So I think we already found those before, but I'll write it again. So we're looking for 0 equals 3t squared minus 18t plus 15. And that was 3 times, and I think it was t minus 1 and t minus 5. So the critical points that we have would be 0 and 5. And then we also need to look at the endpoints of the interval. So we have 0 and 10. So now we can make our chart. We have the times and we have the positions at those times. And the times we're going to look at in order will be 0 for the end of the interval. And then we have 1, and then 5, and then 10 for the other end of the interval. OK, 
So the position at zero, that's gonna be negative seven. The position at one, that would be S of one. And again, you can do this out or you can plug it into a calculator. That's gonna end up being zero. At five, the position is gonna end up being negative 32. And at 10, it's gonna be 243. Okay, so I did these out before. I was not doing that in my head just now. Um, now, these are the positions at each of these different times. We know that in between these times, since these were the only critical points we had here, that it didn't change direction at all. So we just need to worry about what happens now for the distances covered in between these little individual time segments. So from zero to one, it went from negative seven to zero. Negative seven to zero, that means it traveled seven. Then it went from zero to 32, well, to negative 32. That means it traveled a distance of 32 meters. Finally, it went from negative 32 up to positive 243. So that's gonna be 243 plus 32 for a total of 275. And now, to get the distance, just add those up. So the distance, I'll write it down here. Distance is going to be 7 plus 32 plus 275. And that gives us 314, and the units would be meters. Let's look at a graph. Here's a graph of the position function versus time. So what we did was first we looked here from 0 to 1. And this was a distance of 7. Remember, we're really just looking at how far it traveled. We're not worrying about the sign of the, the number here. So we start at negative 7, went to 0. That's a distance of 7 on the s-axis here. And then we went to 5 on the time axis, which was negative 32. And so we were then going from 0 down to negative 32 on the s-axis. And then after that, we went up to, for 10 seconds, 243. So we went all the way from down here, all the way up to there, and that was a distance of 275. It was 243 above zero, and then we had the negative 32 from down here. And so you see, you add all this up. Now if you imagine the object, what it was doing, it started at negative seven, and then it went to zero, so if you imagine an axis here, it started over here at negative seven, it went to zero, this is not to scale here, it went to zero, and then it turned around and went over to negative 32. So then it turned around, went over here, and then from negative 32, it went all the way up to positive 243. So it turned around and went all the way back up here.